So I've been getting a lot of questions recently about what my training style is, why I do what I do, and I wanted to make this video and share with you how I've actually had the best training year of my life despite quarantine and having a new baby who is actually here with me and you might hear her in this at some point. Basically, when the gyms closed down last February, I was stuck with a barbell and a maximum of 185 pounds. So obviously I couldn't do a lot of the same modern gym stuff that I'm used to. Bench press, you know, heavy deadlifts, squats, everything like that. So I had to look into old-time strongman methods, what the strongman at the turn of the century were doing to get jacked and strong beyond anything that natural guys are doing these days. Um, so, I, long story short, I found out what they did, a lot of that through James Fuller, who runs the Strongman Archaeology Instagram. He's got a YouTube too, I'll link that in the description. I mean, he's, he's the best source of information on this stuff. He's got almost every lift anyone's ever done in history demonstrated on his page. Basic tenets, you're going to be doing a lot more variety of heavy compound lifts. I mean, everyone knows that heavy compound lifts are good. That's something people know today, but we do very limited versions today. To start with, the old timers would do one hand versions of basically everything that we do now. In the old Olympics, not only did they have, you know, clean jerk, snatch, and press, they actually had the one hand versions of each of those. One hand clean and jerk, you know, one hand snatch. Um, one hand deadlift was a competitive lift, not in the Olympics, but it was widely practiced and competed in. Um, obviously, maybe some of you have heard about Herman Gorner doing over 700 pounds with one hand hook grip. They were doing some crazy stuff with one hand back then. There were also lifts like the two hands anyhow, which requires you to put weight overhead using multiple implements, using both hands. You have two different hands doing two different things. You're holding a weight overhead while bending down to pick up another weight, lifting it somehow. And then the holy grail of all lifts, the bent press, which is a crazy technique that allows you to lift with one hand overhead probably more than you can, or about equivalent to what you can jerk overhead with two hands. So... Also, Turkish get-ups. They were, you know, heavy, heavier than they do today. A lot of kettlebell stuff. In addition to that, a lot of the old-timers practiced a lot of gymnastics movements. Very common for them to be doing, you know, ring work. Things of that nature. So, long story short, the old-timers were training almost, in a way, almost like CrossFit. Maybe with less conditioning sometimes, but with actual, actually more variety of weightlifting. Um, and there, there are two benefits to that. Benefit number one is when you're doing a lot more variety of exercises, you're hitting a lot more different muscle groups harder that are not being fully stimulated just by a squat, bench, and deadlift. I mean, it's a common problem with modern power lifters. You know, you're, you're gonna have a lot, of, a lot of work for the front of your shoulder. Your rear delts are just not gonna catch up. And, you know, face pulls, um, you know, rear delt machines, things of that nature are just never going to make up the difference between, you know, a heavy bench press and some light machine work. But when you start throwing, throwing in some stuff like bent press, Turkish get-ups, you know, heavy unilateral overhead work, now your shoulders are getting balanced development. Nothing wrong with, you know, doing some front delt development too, obviously. That's very important, but once you get more variety of heavy compounds, that's where you really start to see balanced development. Um, and, you know, modern bodybuilding may preach balance, but the light isolation exercises they use just aren't effective for serious mass and strength, and natural athletes seems to work a lot better for enhanced athletes. Uh, and that's why natural lifters prefer to use heavy compound movements back when there was no steroid alternative. The second benefit to having a much larger variety of lifts is you can rotate more often. You don't have to just be married to the same three lifts, straining the same areas, overstraining the same areas, day after day, week after week, putting all your ego 
into needing new PRs in the same three lifts you've been doing for the last 10 years. That, I mean, that's how you get injured. People look at a lot of the stuff that I do and think that it's going to cause injury. But I've actually been <laughs> injured a lot less this year than you know any previous year because I'm not just going out there week after week trying to you know improve my deadlift got to get the bench press up you know not anymore now I might PR on one hand deadlift one week you know two hands behind the back deadlift the next week you know Arthur lift all the way up the back the next week I'm constantly rotating you know keeping in mind my previous PRs still trying to improve them but I'm rotating a lot more, not putting as much emphasis on any one exercise, so I'm not straining the same areas in exactly the same way every week. And that's kept me relatively injury-free. Um, the other benefit to the old-time methods with a lot more of these more exotic compound exercises is it builds a lot of mobility work right into it. I mean, these guys were crazy flexible. Just try a bent press. You probably won't be able to do it with an empty bar. I can barely do it. I'm still working on the flexibility there. Uh, but my flexibility overall is greatly improved this year. And not just flexibility, but, you know, range at which I can demonstrate strength. You know, things like Jefferson curls, which is an extreme round back, good morning, you know, very lightweight. You know, help you to both build flexibility and um, build strength in weak points at the same time. So, I mean, those are the primary advantages. You've got just versatility. You've got everything being hit with a serious, real exercise that your body takes seriously and is going to actually, you know, build muscle and strength as a result of. You rotate your exercises a lot more. You don't just hammer the same joints and the same things while neglecting other things. You build a lot more mobility because you're, I mean, you're pretty much taking everything off the floor. You're not going to a squat rack or a bench press and just, you know, having something tailored to the way you move now. You're having to, you know, build that range of motion to even get the weights up in the first place. So overall, this is just a, I think a much more healthy, a much you know, surprisingly, considering that, you know, a lot of people think this stuff's dangerous, but it's actually, it actually, uh, I think, prevents injury a lot. Um, and I think it's just much more effective for natural athletes because just flat out natural athletes need, you know, heavy compound exercises to be stimulating them from all the angles. You know, if you're natural, you can't rely on some lightweight machine, uh, machine work, isolation work to you know, do all the balancing out for you. So, you know, I, as far as what my split is, I've, I've been asked that a lot. Nothing, nothing exotic. I, I don't necessarily claim that my split is exactly, you know, what the old timers use. I actually just do push, pull legs. But instead of just, you know, isolation exercises, only, you know, only chest, you know, triceps and deltoid work on push day, I do still full body exercises. I might do, for example, um, Turkish get-ups. That's, I think, one of the absolute best side delt development exercises there is. That's a full body exercise. It doesn't even look necessarily like a shoulder exercise. I like to put it on push day, because again, I think it's a really good delt developer. Um, you know, I might, I might do Arthur lifts on leg day. That's a full body exercise. But I mean, when you, you know, when you do Arthur lifts and then a set of squats, your legs are what's going to get hit the hardest. Um, you know, zerchers, obviously zerchers work the whole body. But again, depending on how you use them, you can make it more of a back, more of a back day type of thing, or more of a leg day type of thing. So I actually do the just the conventional uh, push pull legs. Just you know, I use full body exercises, and if you mix and match and get it right, you'll be able to you know get the benefits of the full body um, lifts, but also specifically target what you're trying to work on that particular day. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else you'd like me to go over, put, make out a video on. Just let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to share and 
you know, keep following. This isn't just a meme. This isn't, uh, you know, for attention. I think I've stumbled on a gold mine of really cool training methods that are more effective for natural athletes than what you're mostly seeing these days. So, you know, try, try some of this out for yourself, and I think you'll be surprised by the results. Aww. Thanks for listening. Yeah! No straps!